staying comfortable even during the dog days of summer is what mobile air conditioning is all about. Automotive systems are being designed tighter than ever before and using smaller refrigerant charges than older cars did. That means their tolerance for loss due to leakage is lots less. Let's just say that the system isn't cooling well anymore when more than 10% oh, of the charge is lost and there are large leaks in the system of say 3 ounces a year. On an older system that held 2 pounds or more of refrigerant, that means we wouldn't have a loss of cooling until next year. But in a newer system that only holds less than a pound, a customer will be back in your shop with a problem before the summer season is over. Low refrigerant charges can also impact oil circulation in the system. That's another good reason for finding and fixing those pesty leaks. That's the subject for this month's The Trainer. a word on protecting your equipment. You've all seen these little DIY cans of R134A at the local store, right? Some even contain a sealant additive that, if allowed into your machine, can lead to expensive repairs. Type 2 sealants react with air and moisture to form a solid, intended to seal leaks in the system. Most do-it-yourselfers go by the saying that if a little is good, a lot's better. We won't discuss the pros and cons of sealants today, except to say it can do the same in your machine, and that can lead to costly maintenance and downtime. So the very first thing I'm going to check for is the presence of sealants in the system. Sometimes a visual check is enough. Look closely at both the low and high side fittings for signs of anything that shouldn't be there. Next, use a sealant detector like this one from Neutronics. It detects for the presence of type 2 sealant by measuring the amount of flow through a sensing plug. If sealant is present, that flow will decrease more than 30% over a few minutes of time. Here's how it's used. Assemble the test rig per the instructions supplied with the kit. Then prep the car for the test by setting the air conditioning for max cooling. Use the lowest temperature setting, maximum blower speed, and close the recirculation door. Allow the car to run for two to three minutes to make sure the refrigerant and anything that's in it has had a chance to circulate. Then turn it all off and let the car sit for another three minutes or so. Next, attach the test rig to the high side service port and monitor the flow rate for 60 seconds, noting the maximum reading. If it won't read over 1.5, You'll need to start the air conditioning up again to see if the flow rate will meet this minimum needed for the test. A low flow rate running can mean there isn't enough gas left in the pipes or there are restrictions in the service port or sensing plug. Monitor the flow rate for three minutes and note the lowest reading. If the flow rate has changed by more than 30 percent, there is sealant in the system. There are numerous reports of counterfeit refrigerants being sold in the U.S., labeled as R134A, but instead containing some type of blend. With the rising cost of R134A and the introduction of a new and much more expensive refrigerant later this year, it's only a matter of time before you run into someone's idea of a cheap fix. Blindly recovering whatever's in the car you're working on can lead to contamination of your source supply or even result in a severe safety hazard. Same goes with buying your supply from an unknown source. So before you connect your equipment, connect an identifier like this one. There are different models available from this top of the line unit to a basic go, no go model that runs under $500. To use the identifier, connect the power source to the car's battery and turn the machine on. The machine will go through a calibration phase and clear itself of any residual refrigerant left from the last test. Next, follow the on-screen instructions to connect the test hose to the car's service port. Open the valve and select the refrigerant you want to test. Then let the identifier do its thing. When it's done, you'll see test results like this one. We'll be talking a lot more about proper recovery, recharging, and other common service mistakes in this month's live Motor Age and TST webcast. It's free to attend, and you can ask questions and offer your own comments just like you could if you were here with me today. It's happening May 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, so register today. Let's move on to leak detection. Once we've determined that the system charge is low, we need to figure out why. Systems today lose very little over time, so the old guide of a car needing to be recharged every year due to normal loss is out. If it's low, it's leaking. Begin with a visual inspection. Look for any signs of trace dye in the fitting caps. Quick tip here, these caps are part of the system seal and must be there. If they're missing, replace them. Many systems have dye in them from the factory and of course, dye may have already been added by another tech, sometimes both. One reason I like to take a quick look with my UV light first. Just might get lucky. 
Look for traces of dye or even spots where an oily residue is collected. Be sure to look over the entire system. I'll try to locate the evaporator drain to see if I can reach it. If so, I'll shine that UV light on it to see if any trace dye is visible. If not, I'm not done yet. Next, I'll swab it with my fingertip to see if I can see any dye trace. Positively identifying a leak in the evaporator core is the biggest challenge and it also seems to be a popular place for leaks to occur. But if I'm going to recommend an expensive repair, I want to do all I can to make sure I'm right first. If I see any suspect spots, those will be the first I go after with my leak detector. Many of you might refer to this tool as a sniffer because it sniffs out refrigerant leaks. Using this tool is a good choice when dealing with a system that is low or empty. As long as there is 50 to 60 PSI of static pressure in the system, you can sniff it. This particular model leak detector meets the newest SAE standard for leak detectors and is able to detect leaks as small as 0.2 ounces per year. It is also less prone to false alarms than older sniffers and can be used with a little more leeway. Here are a few guidelines to remember when using this tool. First, make sure the batteries are good and any filters are clean. Avoid getting oil or grease in the tip while testing. Keep it off of the surface as you move it around. If using an older model, keep the tip about 1 8 inch away from the surface and move it along slowly, about an inch or two per second. This model will detect at 1 quarter inch away, moving it up to 3 inches per second. That's the leeway I was talking about a minute ago. Keep in mind that other chemicals may cause an alarm. Those greasy spots we found earlier, clean them off with a rag, not solvent, to avoid false results. And keep the air around the system still. A good breeze may feel good when it's hot outside, but it's going to make finding that leak harder to do. Last, refrigerant sinks, so check around the bottom of hoses and joints when looking for a leak. If you do find one, back off and clear the tester, then check again. The new testers clear quickly and offer three sensitivity ranges to help you pinpoint the exact location of a leak. If you suspect the evaporator is leaking, place the probe in the evaporator drain tube, being careful to keep any water from entering the tester. Depending on the design, you may be able to get close to the evaporator core by removing the blower motor or the blower motor resistor from the HVAC casing, or by entering the case through the cabin air filter housing if the car is equipped with that feature. Once in a while, you're going to be dealing with a leak that you just can't seem to nail down with the sniffer. I had a Saturn minivan once with dual AC that had a leak in the low side line leading to the rear evaporator. The line was wrapped with a plastic sheath and moisture collected between the sheath and the aluminum line. The leak was plenty big enough to be found with the sniffer, but the plastic sheathing kept it from working. The alternative? Add a UV dye to the refrigerant. There are several tools on the market, like this one from Tracerline. UV dye will circulate with the refrigerant and it will help locate a leak by its ability to fluoresce when the UV light is shined on it. But like anything else, there's a right way and a wrong way to use dye. Here are some tips on using dye in the AC system. First, many manufacturers install dye from the factory, usually in the form of a wafer placed in the accumulator or receiver dryer. A few even specify that this is the only way they want dye added to their systems. Why? To avoid overdosing the system or installing an oil not specified for that car. It's not the dye, it's the carrier agent used to get the dye in the system. Excessive use of dye and the solvent agent used to get it in the system can affect system and compressor lubrication. Dye added may take up to 24 hours to show up, depending on the leak size. With wafers, it can take as long as two weeks. And dye won't circulate properly in a system that is low on refrigerant. Be sure to explain all of these limitations to your customer up front to avoid problems later. Use a good UV light and the yellow sunglasses provided in the toolkit to find that leak. Inspect carefully with an additional focus on the area around the compressor clutch and the evaporator drain. Don't forget to look for potential damage to the condenser caused by flying debris or small rocks kicked up by the car in front. Our ASC study guides are a great resource when preparing for the A7 ASC certification exam. But if you're not comfortable with how your AC service skills are, they also make a great general study guide. Find out more at PassTheASC.com. That'll about do it for this edition of The Trainer, but if you want to know more about AC best practices, be sure to join us in our live webcast May 26th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Motor Age and TST will partner up to offer a free live interactive webcast on AC servicing issues. To register, log on to motorage.com forward slash AC best practices. Again, registration's free. Look forward to seeing you then. And until next time, I'm Pete Meyer.